What up, YouTube? I am your host, video Tutorials and Reviews. Back in here. Big one more video. Guys, you looking at the title of the video, you looking at the thumbnail, you already know what time it is. We must get active. Shout out to YouTube content creator, Sarah Lena. I reviewed videos of her in the past. I want to say it had to be at least a year ago. All right. I think she went radio silent for a little while. Regardless, let's get back in there today. Title of her video, Why Modern Women Aren't Submissive. This content was sent to me on my Instagram, at Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews. It's long, but you know how to spell if you don't. There's a link down in the description box down below. Go up there and follow your boy. Would appreciate your support. All right. Without further ado. His family, so this is gonna be another requested video. This is coming from a brother that says his woman is not necessarily disrespectful. She just will not submit to him. She is not cooperative. She won't listen. She thinks she knows it all. And so he wanted some advice on how to make, he referred to her as an alpha woman, how to make an alpha woman more submissive. And so instead I'm gonna do a video on reasons why modern women do not submit in their relationships today. and. So hopefully some of the things I say in this video will resonate with you and you can come up with your own solutions based on the information you learn here. So number one is her upbringing. Representation matters. If she has never seen a woman submitting to a man or if she has never witnessed anything positive come out of a feminine woman submitting to a man, then she will be less likely to be the type of woman to grow to be submissive Facts. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, our mothers are our first role models as girls. Our mothers teach us what it means to be feminine, what it means to be womanly. And a lot of times our mothers are not feminine because unfortunately in our communities, a lot of mothers are single mothers that are doing things on their own, so they tend to be a little bit more on the masculine side. And no, a lot of us don't yeah. want to say anything negative about our mothers. We don't want to make it seem like our mothers didn't do the best that they could with what they knew and with what they had. Mm -hmm. But I'll say it for you. A lot of us have horrible representation of what a feminine woman is. The same way we say a woman can't raise a boy to be a man because a boy needs a man in order to know what a man is and what a man does, is the same thing when it comes to being a woman. In order for a girl to grow to be a woman that is feminine, she needs that representation young. And if she doesn't have it, she's not going to grow to be that way. Gr the most impactful thing that I think that she said there, outside of all the, she's, there's no false, <laughs> there's no fake news in anything that she just said. But I think that the most impactful thing that I attached to in the way that she said it was is that women who grow up without seeing the example of a feminine woman, but it's also not seeing the positive result of being a positive woman, which if you think about it, Men, we are way more accustomed to understanding the results of being a masculine man. But from a woman's perspective, not only do they not see it, but there's a whole media engine that tells them, bump your femininity. There's movements, feminism, which makes them more masculine if they pay attention to the third and fourth wave uh, versions of it, which makes them much more masculine, which from a dating perspective, relationship perspective doesn't make them any more attractive to men right it make them it might make them more money into the future and pursuing whatever it is that they're pursuing to be the most awesome that they can but what you find is that throughout the entirety of their life when they take a look back and they look at all of the instances that they could have attracted a man that would have been their protector and provider they lost out on those opportunities so now they're living alone, right? We all got aunties. <laughs> yeah, we all got aunties. You just like, every barbecue, she always coming up here single as hell. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Growing up, oftentimes feminine representation kind of looked like some little helpless Disney princess that was waiting on a prince to come yeah. save her or some dumb blonde that was a spoiled rich brat. Oh, as if. What, like it's hard? or some big booty hoe that was being disrespected in a music video, or a woman that was very abused and that had no voice and that was some type of victim. Okay, 
Color purple. Anime. These are often what we had to go by for what it meant to be feminine yep. as young girls. And so weak, docile, uh, th like, it's so crazy to look at this new age description of femininity. And I think like spaces over here on YouTube are trying to reimagine and repurpose, reprioritize the strength of what it means to be a feminine woman. But like, I see it as a degree of weakness is to see a masculine woman or a degree of uh, a woman that grew up in a tortured or toxic environment. And if they take on these masculine traits, right, because they did not see the positives, the value in being feminine, and instead they got all of this bullshit purported to them about how, but if you're feminine, you're weak, right? And it's not those exact words, but we're all products of our environments. You understand what I'm saying? We're all products, and we're going to take on what we see from a, uh, from a family perspective, what we see from a media perspective, and when we're hit with day by day these subconscious, right, forms of information it starts to become us it just is what it is that's how you got people on other sides of the world and if i drop you in that country you sit here and you'll look around like yo is this even earth right because they have their own culture societal norms societal pressures right which makes a culture forms a culture and right now we have a culture that doesn't respect femininity well at least a culture of women that don't respect their femininity don't know how to enhance it don't even know how to work on it Let's keep it moving. So if it's not something that's admirable, if it's not something that's respectable, of course girls don't want to grow up to be like that. But you know what female stereotype is admired and respected and glorified and acknowledged and so overvalued when you're in the black community? The strong, independent black woman, especially the single mother that don't need no man. We take Father's <laughs> Day and give it to single mothers. mothers we yeah. take Mother's Day and we say, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, especially the single mothers. You know, now I think people go about it the wrong way by bashing single mothers. It is something that is tough and it is something that should be respected. However, I do think that it is over glorified in the community so much that we don't yes. want to be honest about that lifestyle. Yes. That is depressing. It is stressful. She's good. It is unhealthy, not only to the woman itself, but to her children. And so because that strong, independent woman was the representation of what a lot of women have, had, a lot of women grow today to have the education, to have the degree, to have the job, but they are still Unhappy. miserable. Yes. A lot of them have absolutely no idea how to attract or keep a good man. Yep. A lot of them are labeled as angry black women because they do not know how to express themselves without being disrespectful or condescending. Sign. They don't know how to get their point across in a feminine nurturing way because yep. they did not have a feminine representation. A lot of them have no idea how to maintain a social life and to keep bonds with other women because they did not have a feminine representation. A lot of modern women have Ooh. a lot of insecurities when it comes to their physical appearance and their bodies because they were never taught by a feminine woman how to maintain, embrace, and properly nurture their body. And so they do all these type of things to cover up their insecurities. A lot oh, of modern wow. women are stressed, depressed, lonely, low sex drive, having issues getting pregnant, and so many of this could be prevented if they had a feminine role model to teach them how to be a woman. And so again- You, you know what's something I just thought of? She talked about all of these different things and, and, I, and as she was saying all of these different things, I was thinking, well, well, how did it become to be that way? And there's some other, um, systemic issues that you know we can talk about but like one thing that just popped into my mind is like this is actually one of the negatives of having a country full of free speech <laughs> this is because you can get businesses that are created and um that can market products and can market ideas and can market to people's emotions in a way to have them feign accountability to have them uh feel like entitlement is required right to feel like shame is um dangerous right like no shame is not is not dangerous i think shame to a degree it depends how far that you push it okay can be very good in helping to shape a healthy community of people a healthy community of people you understand me so like that's part of the negative of free speech like you know if you maintain speech right 
like every other, most of every other country outside the United States does, you have a less likely opportunity to be able to do that. But I would say this idea of free speech has worked so well for America that it, I'd rather the free speech happen because I think what's going to happen is the good information will inevitably boil up to the top, but it's going to take decades, if not centuries for it to be able to do that. I, I think what you see out on YouTube is this blossoming of information that can actually help people get to their goals, to stop thinking short term of all the ish that's being marketed to them, the bullshit that's being placed in front of their eyes short term, the benefits that they see out of this short term lifestyle and look into the long term. Because more often than not, you're gonna, leave a, you're gonna lead a long life what are you doing to maintain your happiness within that? I'm talking to dudes as well. What are you doing to maintain and exceed the expectations of the goals that you have hopefully already set for yourself? Many of us don't want to hurt our mother's feelings, so we don't want to suggest that she didn't do a good job raising us. But the truth of the matter is many of us women had a horrible representation of what a feminine woman is. She did not have a submissive feminine woman to look up to. Therefore, she is not a feminist, submissive woman today. You, you know what else is damaging um, about that, not having a good representation of it, is because there's a lot of young women that never had good representations of it, but they still le led fantastic and he relatively healthy lives, but they find themselves struggling in relationships with men and competing for that leadership spot, competing for the, but they don't yet realize that in that competition, they'll inevitably not be happy anyway, but they've not seen it into their past. Should I've had recent dating slash relationships and I look at the relationship that the mother had with the boyfriend or the husband and then I look at the relationship and how she choose to have dialogue and have conversations with me. And I'm just like, that is a direct representation. And man, she does not understand that she does not curtail the way that she chooses to represent herself to me. Then she's going to leave a long, unhappy life, not really understanding usually until it's too late, usually until that wall has already hit. And now she has to significantly reduce her stance standards to attract the man that she's actually looking for but not really looking for because she could have gotten earlier when she was in her prime she looked up to a single independent woman that didn't need a man and so today that is what she is i am a, that said i'm a strong woman because a, a strong woman raised me that's what it said Number two kind of ties into number one a little bit, and that is a lot of modern women, and men for that matter, have the wrong idea of what it means to be submissive in a relationship. Mm -hmm. A lot of men and women have a tainted and imbalanced understanding of submission nowadays. It's amazing how many women have said to me something along the lines of, oh, so in order for me to have a good man, that means I gotta be weak, and that means I gotta be stupid, that means I gotta think the man is superior to me. like. That's not what it means. I would never tell a woman to think like that. But that is what a lot of sisters think of when they think of being submissive. They think that that means that they are a slave, that they have no voice, that they can't have goals. They can't have any purpose in life aside from cooking and cleaning. Mm. A lot of times when we think of submission nowadays, we think about that scene on Coming to America, the first movie. What do you like to do? Whatever you like. <laughs> what kind of music do you like? Whatever kind of music you like. I know what I like. And she has no goals of her own, no mm. opinions of her own. She's there simply to serve, satisfy, and obey him. And though there are... And and most dudes don't even want that. Like, to completely... Serve, like, that would get so annoying. That would get so annoying. And so, like, even in, like, my past dating relationships, it was young one lady, and it was whatever I wanted. Like, what... Like... She, she didn't really have friends like that. Like, it was just whatever. Beautiful girl, too. Beautiful. And she just, whatever I wanted to do was just it all the time. And I and just be like, damn, like, I need my own space, too. Like, you know, go off and live live your life. And then we could set days in a week, you know what I'm saying, to come over when she came. It was just all about, you know, and I, th and I think even that as well, like, it made me pull back some because I think that I need a good, uh, not negative challenger, but someone that when we put our ideas together, you know, it makes the ideas better overall. Like that's why I would consider more often than not for something a little bit more um, long term, but not someone who's all up under your every move and beck and call and this and that. Like there's some dudes that I would say they're probably less experienced 
in the dating game that say that they want someone to be subservient or someone to serve completely. And it, and I don't think that that's realistic for me. You understand me? I don't think it's realistic for me. I lose my mind after a while. Have your own goals, have your own opinions, have your own thoughts. There are many men that push that narrative and that push that idea of submission. That is not what it means. Yeah. If it were up to some of those misogynistic men, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel, but I don't listen to those types of men. I know that my role in society is completely different than what my role is inside of the home. Um, in society, Ooh. I am a leader. I am influential. I am a powerful woman. I am a coach and a mentor, but behind closed door, yes, I am submissive. Yes, I cook. Yes, I clean. Yes, I give massages. I do all of that. And it is possible. This is why, like, I feel like it's so important to put content like this on a pedestal and to be able to talk about this because she hit on something fantastic right there, which for modern women, I think is a super foreign concept. And it's the idea that whatever you do in the workplace, the personality that you put up in the workplace, is it really that hard to switch that personality when you go home? Is it really that hard? Sarah Lana's doing it. She said that she's doing it. She got a big old ring on her finger. <laughs> <laughs> she got a big old ring on her finger. She said that she's doing it, but she understands that that's a component of being a modern woman. I think a lot of modern women don't understand that there is a degree of a role switch. There's a degree of a code switch, right? If you want to be a dude, especially a high value dude, there's a degree of a code switch that you have to undergo and to get really good at it. But shit, we code switch all throughout life. We code switch all throughout life. Shit, the person that I am in front of a camera it's going to code switch to a degree than speaking to the CEO of my nine to five to a degree. Right. It's not going to go outside of my, my of my personality, but there might be words that I would choose up here. That's going to be different than the CEO of a company. And it just is what it is. I'm not losing myself by code switching to a degree, but I but the most successful of us are the ones that understand the degree of code switching in order to get the outcome that you are looking for. It's not pretending, it's not faking, it's just shifting yourself a, to a degree to fit within the norms or the structures that you are in to get the outcome, to get the results that you want. Strategy, that's all that that is possible to do both but a lot of women have issues finding that balance because their definition of what it means to be submissive is imbalanced so that's mm. that one being submissive in a relationship does not mean that you are weak that does not mean you are inferior that does not mean you are a slave that does not mean anybody Facts. is controlling every aspect of your life that does not mean you can't have goals that does not mean you can't have purpose outside of being barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen 24 Facts. 7 that's not mean any of that but because that is what a lot of women assume when they think of submission it kind of keeps them from going down that route number all right Listen, she's hit on so many fantastic points in these first two points. And I'll say the second point is actually really related to the first point. But I'm going to have you guys go up to the channel and finish out the rest of the video. Absolutely fantastic content. Just as I said before, it's really important that we go over content like this and be able to put it uh, up on and to showcase in a way to try to get information out here that I think is more positive in nature, that will drive the culture more to the direction that the culture needs to grow, to continue to create a society and culture of awesome people so that these awesome people can get what they want, build the families that they want in a structure that provides them the ability to create more awesome people. And then the cycle continues. Then we can get back up on track. Then we can get back on track, but we have so much imbalance due to the free speech and the things that hit our eyes, that companies are allowed to sell, that syndicated TV is allowed to push into your eyes in order to sell this, that, and the third, the Cosmo magazines, the this, the that, all up and down, left and right, that continues to promote no accountability, this entitlement culture, this lack of responsibility and decisions that we make early in our lives that's going to determine who we are into the future. There has to be some rebalancing there has to be some recalibr recalibration. Has to be. Has to be. Const and there's a certain amount of content creators that seem like they're up for the job. You understand me? Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Media tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. We over here rewriting the narrative. What's good? Holla at me. All right? Until next time, YouTube. Peace.